Now if I said that this upcoming metal detecting video was nothing fantastic, I would be pretty much underselling it. It really is nothing fantastic. You could count the coins that I found on two fingers of one hand, which isn't very good, but it was enjoyable nonetheless, if a little windy, so I hope that the wind noise doesn't affect this video. Obviously I'm shooting this intro after I've made the footage of the hunt and it was very windy so I haven't edited that, I haven't even looked at it. I hope it's okay. I'll edit out bits that are too windy because one thing I don't like when I'm watching videos or when I'm making videos is wind noise. This has given the wrong reading to be a coin, but it looks like a coin ball. More than likely just another button. Ah! It is a coin, and it is a sixpence, but unfortunately it's post-1947, so it's Cooper Nickel orange. <sighs> Any of the post 47 crap comes out that colour. A few years earlier and it would have been silver. Would have come out the ground being silver as well, not orange. Right, I've got no doubt that there is still a lot of coins in this field, but I've hammered it so hard with these two detectors over the last few years that I think I've pretty much cleaned everything out down to about 10-12 inches. What's left is going to have to wait until I get my super deep detector. Now I'm aware of the fact that the wind is probably going to cock this video up. Behind me is a wood and I have quickly gone through there with the e-track ages ago. Found a couple of half pennies and an old penny. But now all the vegetation's died right down so I'm going to go in there and hopefully shoot some footage in there because the last thing I want to do is give you some awful video where I'm finding an out and it's affected by the wind. I wouldn't want to watch that. So I'm going to go in there. It's hard going in this wood, very steep, and to be honest there's hardly anywhere that's actually detectable. And I've already done it with the E-Track back in the day. I have got a signal up there which is reading 1414 on the E-Track and 59 on the Deus. Seems like a very shallow signal, I would like to think it's a hammered coin, but here where I've never found a hammered coin, I doubt it probably a ring pull. I'm gonna dig it up anyway. Let's have a look. It's right on the top. That's a bad sign. So I doubt it's anything old. a ring or something. Nothing of any sort of interest, age or value. <laughs> but still it's a find. Uh, I'm gonna go back into the field now. I've actually been planting bulbs in there this morning so I've dug about 100, 150 holes and in the first four or five holes that I dug 
I dug up something that looked like a coin ball. It was a discoloured piece of soil in amongst all the other ordinary coloured soil. Uh, one of them had an imprint on as well, which looked like the end of a key or something. I couldn't find whatever made the imprint in the hole. So, whilst I've buried all the other bulbs, I've left those two holes open. And I'm going to go over them with the metal detector and see what's in those holes. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be something decent. Well, there was nothing in the first hole. Couldn't find anything at all. This one, there is something in here, according to the heat track. That's nice. Looks like a little badge. Looks like an old boys brigade badge. That's quite nice. Very good. I'll get these bulbs planted now. Oh yeah. On the way back to the car, well, on the way back to the van, using only the E-Track, looks like I've got a threepenny bit or a sixpence. Sixpence. Get in there. Whoop, oh, there we go. Marvellous. Well, that fella took some finding. 1937. There's still stuff in this field, no matter how hard I bash it. It's in reasonable condition, that, but... Two coins, both sixpences, one of which is silver. Can't say fairer than that from an absolutely thrashed-out sight. Marvellous. This one's reading 9.10 on the E-Track, which ordinarily wouldn't be a good diggable target, but it's more or less where half-sovereign territory is, and I do live in hope. Tin foil! Well, there you go. I told you that it wasn't the best hunt in the world, but there was still a bit of silver. Two sixpences, one of which was 1956, and the other one was, oh god, I've forgotten already, 1937, but it was 50% silver. It still counts as a silver. Two coins, one of which was silver, so I was over the moon with that. And the good thing about the other sixpence, the one that wasn't silver, was that the owner of the property came along as I was digging that one up, and he, he was actually standing behind the camera as I was digging it up, talking to the camera. So that felt a little bit awkward because I normally don't have an audience when I'm talking. I normally just talk to the camera. So anyway, his birthday was 1956, the year of that coin. So I gave him that coin and then I went on to find the silver one. So that was, that was good. I, I like things like that because it's strange coincidences like that that you remember. Now in the coming weeks I will be going out more for metal detecting, obviously. There's a lot of sites that I've got that I've never even touched. I'll be having a look into some medieval lead mines, which are really tucked away in the middle of nowhere. I'm excited about that. In fact, I'll wake up in the morning excited, not knowing what I'm going to do. I'm just permanently excited about what's going to happen. And having a lot of spare time would make me happier but that's not going to happen. The way my business is going, I might even get less spare time. So the time that I do have for detecting and doing bushcraft, getting out on the bike, getting out exploring, that makes me appreciate it even more. So I'm really looking forward to this year. I do know that I should be going up the North Northumberland coast sometime in February. So much to look forward to and I'll be bringing you most of it in videos. Thanks very much for watching and I shall catch you next time.
you little devils.